Advanced uh, for Pro Solutions software. And essentially what the Advanced class is, is it really is just a way for us to um, show our customers that are already familiar with the software some of the things that they may not be familiar with, some of the things that the software can do that uh, they may just not know that it can do. So it's not so much a teaching class as it is an understanding of some of those uh, features. So Great. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, the first thing that we're going to be talking about is the ability to email staff. So for instance, in your employee files, you have the ability to have an email address stored in the employee file. Also, you have this button here that says email. When I click this, it will insert the employee's email. You can type in a subject, type in a message, and hit send, and now you're sending that message to whomever you want, whichever employee you actually selected. However, on the right-hand side, you also have a list of all of your staff. And all of those that have email addresses, hopefully they all do, um, you would be able to, if you cared to, you could click the button that says select all. And by doing that, you will, instead of choosing one employee, all of the employees now will be in the email address. Type your subject line, type your message, and now you're sending out essentially a business-wide email, something to the effect of don't forget Friday's meeting at 12 or you know whatever it may be. Um, so that's a way to make a quick and easy contact uh, directly to your staff. Also, if you are in the appointment book, you can right-click on any employee and at any time select email, and the exact same window will come up. And once again, it will be that employee's email address, so you can send them a quick message, or again, you could hit select all and send it to everybody. You can also, after hitting select all, deselect just a few that you don't want to get the message. Again, send that mess, uh, write that message and send, and now it's going to a select group of staff members rather than everybody. Okay, so I just want you to be aware that that is available to you. Now, if you say, well, you know, I tried that and it didn't work, what that means is that your Darcy system is not up and running. Darcy controls all of the emails in the system, so be sure that Darcy is running if you want to be able to use that feature. Um, any questions okay. on that before we continue? No, yeah, makes sense. All right. Okay, then, oh, you know what? There is one thing that I forgot to mention when we started this class. At the beginning of this class, I started recording this class. So uh, everything I say and what you see on the screen, uh, as well as any questions that you have or anybody else may have as they join us, um, this is going to be recorded at the end of the class. That The class will be converted into a uh, a YouTube video. And if you would like, we can email you a link to that so that you can review the class that you attended uh, at any time. Okay? Great I just want on. you to be aware of that. Absolutely. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to be talking about is social analytics. Now, social analytics is available to you, um, but it, it may not be part of your software yet. And what I mean by that is that even though it's available to you at no charge, you must request it. So social analytics is not something that is just automatically turned on. It's something that we have to uh, turn on for you because there are a few steps involved. Specifically, we need to be able to you know, find your Facebook page, uh, Twitter, things like that. But what am I talking about? If I go to reports and I go to graphs, one of my options is social analytics. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. You're not going to see anything when I first click on it. And the reason for that is because this particular account that I'm using is not set up for it. Let me make that a little bit bigger so you can see this. It says, you are not authorized for this service. Please call, and then that's our telephone number, and speak to your sales rep for more information. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in an account number that I am familiar with, that I have actually set this up for. And so if yours was set up, by clicking on the social analytics button, you might see a window that looks something like this. Now, what this window is showing you is your Facebook and Twitter analytics. And it can also include other things, for instance, like Instagram, et cetera. If your business is using social media sites, those social media sites can be linked in. And now this is brought to you by a company called Social Beautify. Social Beautify handles social media and um, networking, uh, social networking uh, sites for businesses. And they supply us with this information, which is another reason why, by the way, it needs to uh, 
be set up for you. Uh, we need to get in touch with Social Beautify, have it put together, and then it becomes part of your software. Again, there is no charge for this. I just want you to be aware of it. Um, but this okay. kind of information is going to help you, for instance, on your Facebook page. When you do posts, some of those posts are going to be more popular than others. For instance, you'll see here, I've got a post here that has 3,672 impressions. And if I scroll down here, I've also got a post that has 70 impressions, obviously one much more popular than the other. So as you do posts, this kind of information can be relayed back to you so that you can determine which posts are more popular than others. That way, um, you can f start focusing on working on posts that are going to get you the highest number of impressions. You'll also see things like your demographics. Who is it that you're trying to speak to? You know, you're going to have your age demographics here, you're going to have your sex demographics, even the cities that you may reach out to. Uh, hopefully these cities are in your local area. You probably don't care about Algiers and Cairo. <laughs> we are in national business. We have uh, clients in all 50 United States, Canada, South America, uh, Asia, Europe, and you know, just a handful in some of those areas. But the truth of the matter is, is that uh, because as an international business, it may be more important to us what they think about us in Cairo are just as important as what they think about us in Los Angeles. Whereas for you, depending on your neck of the woods, it may just be the surrounding suburbs that you're interested in. But again, whatever cities are going to be looking at your sites and um, liking or sharing or uh, just in getting an impression of what it is you put out there, you'll be able to see what areas you're, in, uh, you're affecting. Um, again, that's social analytics and it is offered to you. Uh, you just need to have it set up. And you can do that by contacting your sales rep here. Okay, next thing. We talked about sending emails to our staff. Well, you can do the same thing with your clients. I'm going to go to a client here. I'll pull up Miss Babcock, for instance, because I use her for everything. And so here I've got Miss Babcock's client file. And one of the buttons that a lot of people are just unfamiliar with that they didn't know existed even is this little button that says email. Now they know the software can email Ms. Babcock um, her appointment reminders uh, and confirmations that it can send out promotions and things like that. That's not what this is. Those are automated. In this case, this is a one time, I just click on it, and again, it will input her email address, type in your subject, type in your message, and hit send. This email will go out with your logo on it, with your social networking icons on it, et cetera, as long as, of course, you've set up Darcy. And so in this case, you know, maybe she just forgot her glasses or something like that. And you gave her a call, it went straight to voicemail, or it said that her voicemail was full and so you couldn't even leave her a message. So you just click this button here, type in, hey, Michelle, you left your glasses the last time you were here. We'll hold on to them for when you come back and send, something like that. Whatever it may be, quick instant email to your client with one click of a button. Okay? And that. All right. Another thing that we're going to uh, talk about right now is what we call the month view. Now, everybody is familiar with the day view screen in the appointment book. This is where you book your appointments for the day. So for instance, this is Wednesday, March 29th, 2017, and I could choose a customer, whoever they may be. I'm sure you're familiar with this. Choose a group, mm -hmm. go with my hair group, for instance, choose a service like a blow, dry, and curl, and book with Abigail. So now my appointment is booked. This is my day view screen, and I can use these little arrows to go forward one day at a time. So now it's Thursday, March 30th or Friday, March 31st, or I can use the left arrow to go back in time or to take me back to my current date. Of course, I can also use my calendar to jump to a specific date, etc. But again, you're looking at one day at a time. That's our day view screen. We also have something called, of course, the week view screen, which people are usually familiar with. Right click, for instance, on Debbie and go to her week view. And now I'm looking at just Debbie's schedule for the next two weeks. With my little plus and minus signs, I can add or subtract dates. So I can even see up to a full 31 columns on a single screen. However, something that people aren't usually familiar with is the month view screen. And now you might think, okay, well, I, I, I know what that means. A day is showing you a single day. The week view is showing you a couple of weeks, up to 31 days. So the month view is probably showing you the whole month, right? Well, yes and no. It's not quite the same. First of all, the month view can be gotten to from a lot of different places. For instance, I can choose month view from my appointment book. And here comes my month view window. I could, from the main menu, go to appointments and select month view. And there it is again. Even if I'm in sales, I can go to book appointments and choose month view. 
and there it is again. So what is the month view screen and how does it work? So this is my month view screen and now I'm currently in March 2017 and today happens to be the 29th of March. So all of the other days of March have essentially been removed from the ability to book appointments. But now I'm on the 29th, hence the italics. This is the day that I'm currently on. And the 30th and the 31st are the last two days of this month. So whatever day, if it was March 1st, March 1st would be in italics and all of these would be in black. This is letting me know that these are the available days in this month to book an appointment. Now, I could choose, say, April, and as you can see, it's changed dramatically. All of these are black now. Again, those that are highlighted in black are the days that you can book an appointment. Well, that's obvious. I mean, you don't need to see a special screen for that. You know what days you're open. But then you can choose a specific operator, someone like Kathy here. And what may have happened, let's choose somebody who it might actually happen to. Let's go with, oh, there we go. Okay, so I chose Kayla. And you'll notice when I chose Kayla, Monday also grayed out. And the reason for that is because Kayla doesn't work Sundays or Mondays. So again, I'm only left in black with the days that can be booked. Then I can choose a specific service. Now let's go with somebody that I usually book with. So I'm going to choose Christian here. You'll notice that Monday just went black again because he is available on Mondays. Then I can choose a specific service. Let's uh, go with an anti curl and haircut here. So now I've chosen a service. This is an hour and 45 minute long service. Some of these days may have now in this case, because it's sample data, these all of my days are wide open, uh, so they're all still black. But in your case, you may very well have a busy appointment book. So by choosing Christian, some of these days may have just automatically grayed out because he doesn't work those days or he's taken that time off, whatever it may be. Then you choose a service, and based on the time of that service, other days that had been black may have grayed out as well. Because, for instance, let's say, for instance, on the 6th, Thursday the 6th, let's just say that he had plenty of times available, but they were all half hour or maybe even an hour gaps. He doesn't have a full hour and 45 minutes available at any one time during that day because of other appointments that he has. So that day then would have grayed out because there would be no time to fit in an hour and 45 minute appointment. So what happens then is this. You choose a month you're shown the days that you can book. You then choose an operator. Some of these days are going to gray out, leaving you with only days that can be booked. Then you choose a service. Others may have grayed out, again, leaving you only with days that it can, in fact, be booked. So you might only be left with a handful of days in a particular month. Makes it very easy to be able to tell the customer, well, he could see you on the 6th and the 11th and the 20th, but those are really the only days that he could do an anti mm -hmm. with haircut. So then you would be able to choose any of those days, and you will be given just the available times that that service could be booked. There may only be one time. There may be half a dozen. There may be a whole bunch, like I've got here, because as I said, my days are wide open with Christian right now, because this is sample data. But it doesn't matter, however it works, whether, no matter how many times you have, you can still book the appointment on that. So I've, got my, I've chosen the sixth. I see the available times for the sixth. And if the customer is satisfied with one of those times, I can choose one. So now I've chosen 1 o'clock on Thursday, April 6, 2017, with Christian for an anticurl with haircut. And now I can choose my customer, whoever they may be. We'll go with Adriana Garcia here. Just like any time you book an appointment, you have to choose the client type. We'll say that she asked for Christian, so that's a request, and book it. The appointment has been booked. Well, let's take a look. So let's go to April 6th. There's April 6th, there's Christian, that's 1 o'clock, Adriana Garcia for an anticurl with haircut. It booked just fine. So you might say, you know, that's a little bit complicated, that might be more than what I need to do because I'm fine with booking appointments during the day or looking at my week view screen, et cetera, and that's all well and good. But if you start using the month view, you'll start seeing how quickly and easily you're able to book appointments. Choose the day, you're left with just the times available. So you don't have to scroll down, you don't have to find available times that you can squeeze somebody in, et cetera. You're left with just the times available. You can read those times off to the customer, they tell you which one they want, click it, fill in their information, and book it. The appointment is booked, and there it is on the appointment book. So that's the month view screen. Do you have any questions on that before we continue? No, that's great. All right. Okay, the next thing that we're going to talk about 
Um, some people think, you know, oh, wow, talk about a waste of time. Why did your developers even put that in? And then others, just the exact opposite. They're like, oh, thank you. I've been, that is just one of the things that I have been desperate for. And so I get all sides. You know, you never know whether or not this is going to be something that you need. But what I've noticed is that even some of the people who have thought, well, I'll never use that, every once in a while they're like, you know what, I need to use that right now, and it's a very, very valuable tool, and that is called locking and unlocking columns. So, of course, we know what a column is. This is Abigail's column. This is Anna's column. Mm -hmm. This is Kathy's column, etc. Now, when I go to a particular group, some of my people may or may not be present because they may not work within those groups. Let's say you're a salon and spa, so you offer waxing and hair. You offer nails and massages, etc. Well, obviously, a stylist and a colorist, for instance, may not be a massage therapist or a nail technician. And so people work within different groups. So if I choose a group, for instance, like nails, I'm left with just the people that perform nail services. And if I choose a group like waxing, Again, just those people that perform waxing services as well as the rooms that waxing can be booked in. So notice, I've got Sarah in waxing, but I don't have Sarah in nails. Now let's just say that I'm in my waxing service here, and I'm booking an appointment for Sarah. Uh, let's go with Maury here, and we'll do a uh, chest wax and we'll book that with Sarah at 10 o'clock. Now, for whatever reason, you can come up with the reason on your own, but for whatever reason, you need to see Sarah's column. It's a busy appointment book. Sure. You've got a whole bunch of appointments here. You just booked one for Maury here, and you're about to book another appointment for Maury, perhaps, and you need to see Sarah's, but you know that when you jump to the next group that you need to book, which is Nails, you know that Sarah's not gonna be there anymore, and you can't remember everything that you see here. So what I can do is this. I can right-click on Sarah, and I can select Lock Column. By locking her column, any group I go to, Nails, she is going to come as well. So I've locked her column. No matter where I go, Sarah's coming with me, whether she works in that group or not. This way, I still have access to her column, even though I'm in a group that she does not work in. Now, by the way, just because she's showing here now doesn't mean she works in the Nails group. If she does not work in the nails group, and I tried to book a nail service for her, it's going to say, this operator does not perform this service. So you can't make a mistake just because you dragged her along with you. This simply gives you the ability to view her, her column. Also, you can lock an unlimited number of columns. So I could have five people coming with me from group to group to group, et cetera, um, or 10 people, it doesn't matter. But once I'm done, looking at her column for whatever reason I needed to, I can hit unlock right here, and mm -hmm. she vanishes. So once I'm finished, she'll stay there until I hit unlock. She'll come with me to every group I go to. She'll do it all day long until I hit unlock. Once I hit unlock, Sarah will no longer be available to me unless I am in a group that she performs services in. That's locking and unlocking columns. Do you have any questions on that before I continue? Uh, no, that sounds easy enough. All right. Okay, the next thing that we're going to talk about is something that everybody's familiar with, but not everybody knows exactly how it works, um, and that is refunding. Now, of course, we all know that we can refund products, et cetera, at the point of sale, obviously, and you should be able to do that with any software. But what a lot of people are not familiar with is some of the, I guess, you could say tricks with refunds. And so let me explain what I mean by that. Well, first of all, we've got our little refund button up here in the upper left-hand corner. And if I click on it and highlight it, now I'm going to be offering a refund. If it is not highlighted, I'm doing a sale. It's really very simple. However, what things people don't understand is that you can mix and match throughout. So I'm going to choose somebody who's got an appointment with me now. We'll go with Maury. So Maury saw Sarah. She got a chest wax for $50. Okay, we're ready to go. Now I'm going to click refund here. Does that turn this into a refund? Absolutely not. Because when we pulled this up, this was grayed out. This is a sale. Just simply clicking here does not suddenly turn that into a refund. And that's a mistake some people make. This is still a sale. However, anything I add to the ticket now 
will be a refund. Perhaps the last time Sarah was here, she got a bang trim and she paid for it. She went home, took a look in the mirror and said, oh, <clears throat> and then gave a call to my salon and spa and said, you know what, I, I came home and I'm really unhappy with the bang trim. And you say, you know what, I'm sorry about that. You're a good customer. Um, next time you come back in, I'll refund you that bang trim. So you can refund more than just products. You can refund anything you sell. So you can refund services, you can refund retail, you can refund gift certificates or gift cards, you can refund memberships. If you can sell it, you can refund it. So I'm going to say that last week when she came in, she also saw Debbie and she got a bang trim. But now because that's highlighted, this is now a refund. So she no longer owes me $50, she now owes me $35 because she got a refund on the bang trim. Then. I take it off and I say she also saw Kathy and she got a facial highlights. So now she owes me $115, 50 for the chest wax, $80 for the facial highlights and negative $15 for the bang trim mm -hmm. refund. Now of course I can do product as well. So we click on refund put in our product number or scan our product or look it up by name, however you want to do it. And the person whose commission is going to get tagged. So Matthew last week sold her the Justin All-in-One shampoo. She noticed that she's allergic to one of the ingredients and she returned it unopened. So I'm doing a refund. Again, she now owes me less than she did before. Again, the important thing to note here is that I am mixing and matching refunds and sales on the same ticket just by clicking and unclicking, clicking and unclicking. Then of course I can go to payment. Now, when I go to payment, if the amount is positive, then no big deal. You're simply going to go through the process of payment like you always have. However, if the ticket itself was just a negative, click on refund, put in our product. So in this case, it's just a negative and I go to payment. Mm -hmm. This is a negative dollar amount. That's fine. If I accept this as a negative dollar amount for cash, and you know I've got my hardware hooked up to my register, the uh, register pops open, and I am going to give this person $21 cash. Well, if that's the case, my drawer is now aware of the fact that a transaction has been done for negative $21. So my drawer is accurate. The drawer knows that $21 left it. So it's still important to do it. If it was a credit card, for instance, and it's a negative balance, if you're processing directly through the software, then it's going to look like this. And you can hit credit, you can use the card that they used the last time they were there and put this money back on their card. Or if you're not processing directly through the software and you're using a system outside, then you can do their credit on the terminal that you use outside of the software the way you normally would. However, you're still going to keep a record of here this way, again, your drawer knows that your credit cards are less $21 today because you did a refund. Again, whether it's a negative amount or positive amount, you still want to process the transaction. Does that make sense? Yes. All right, we'll go ahead and get out of that. Absolutely. Okay, any questions at all on refunds before I continue? Nope, it's one of the easiest systems I've seen yet. <laughs> All right, okay. Now, there is one other thing that I want you to be aware of with a um, return of product. So let's try that one more time. We'll go with James here. And uh, we'll say that he saw, uh, we'll go with Debbie and got a back facial, but that he's also returning the Justin All-in-One shampoo that Madison sold him. Okay, so he owes me $44. I'm going to go to payment. He's going to pay, let's say, with cash. He gives me $50 and accept. So it's going to make my change, $6 is due him, and except now I want you to see something. This says, do you want product, and there's your SKU number, just an all-in-one uh -huh. shampoo to be returned to stock. Now, the fact of the matter is, is that Mr. Fabiani here may have opened this bottle of shampoo, used it a few times, and decided this is not a good product for him and he brings it back to you, explains his issue, and you decide, you know what, I'm gonna go ahead and refund you. So you go through the process of refund, that's fine. But he's opened it, he's used it. So you're being nice enough to give him a refund, but you're not going to be returning the product to stock. So you'll be throwing it in the trash more than likely. 
-hmm. However, like I said before, if he had looked at the ingredients and discovered, oh gosh, I'm allergic to that, and brought it back to you unopened, it still has the bubble wrap on it, et cetera, or what bubble wrap, still has the wrap on it, et cetera, and you look at that and you say, okay, you know what, this can go back on my shelf, or this can go back in the back, or I can put it in my professional, whatever it is. Do you want this product to be returned to stock? So you have an option of yes or no. If I say yes, then it will put the product back on my inventory count. So if my software believes I have 21 of these, when I say yes, it's going to say, oh, well, now I've got 22. If I say no, then it will still show that I only have 21 of them because I've tossed it in the trash. The fact that I'm giving him his money back doesn't mean automatically that my inventory count has been raised. But if I say yes, it will, in fact, raise my inventory count so that my inventory numbers continue to be accurate. Because my inventory numbers fluctuate all the time based on purchase orders, and you receive those orders, so you accept them, and uh, it uploads the quantities that you've received, or you uh, uh, processed a sale, for instance, so it takes one of them out of your inventory, or however many you sold, et cetera. So your ending quantity on hand is constantly fluctuating. And so by doing something like this, you're going to make sure that that number is still accurate. So I'm going to say, no, I'm not returning this to stock. and we're done with this transaction. There you go. And uh, no questions on refunds, so we're going to go ahead and move on to the next thing that we're going to talk about that people are unfamiliar with is transaction notes. Transaction notes. Now, you're probably familiar with notes in the client files. For instance, let's go back to Ms. Babcock here, just like seeing her face. And so here I've got Ms. Babcock, and I've got lots of different things to do with her for notes. For instance, I can hit notes and write actual general notes. Um, and then down here, if I wanted to, I could do operator notes. Now, the difference between the two is that operator notes are for a specific operator, and they will never print, ever. So they're for the operator's eyes only. And then, of course, general notes are available for anyone to see, and they can be printed out. So those are, that's the note section. We also have pop-up notes, where I could say something like, uh, Michelle is allergic to glycerin. And any time I pull Michelle up, whether it's to book an appointment for her or process a sale, if I pull Michelle's name up, the very first thing I'm going to see is Michelle is allergic to glycerin. That's a pop-up note. So we've got different types of notes. And of course, even in the appointment book, I could have notes on an appointment. Blah, 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 add, close. And now there's a mark showing that I've got a note. Notice when I come over here, nothing. When I come over here, there's a note, blah, blah, blah. Now. Transaction notes, though. These are the ones that nobody knows about. So let's say that Maury comes in. She saw Sarah. She got a chest wax. $50 is what she owes. Now, Sarah is an excellent employee. She does a great job in waxing. And that's why she works here, because she's really good at it. But she's a gigantic pain in the neck. Okay, that is Sarah, the employee. We keep her around because she's so good at what she does, but she is a real pain in the neck. And the reason I say she's a pain in the neck is because she has a very, very poor memory, and yet she is anal about her commission report. And so Sarah walks up to me at the front desk. I'm just a lowly front desk person, and Sarah says, hey, you know what? When I did this chest wax for Maury, um, it... Um, you know, I, I, I left it on a little bit too long, and um, I kind of hurt her a little bit. And uh, I told her that I was going to give her $20 off. And I said, okay. So she asks me, Matt, do me a favor and make sure that Maury gets $20 off. All right, will do. So I can highlight this, and I can add a discount and put in a, a coupon or something like that, or I could simply modify the price, which is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to say she's paying $30 instead of 50 all right, great. Well, now Matt is familiar with Sarah, and he knows in a week or two when she gets her commission report, she's going to see that she got commission for $30 on a $50 service. Instead of or commission for $50, she's getting it for $30. And I know she is going to throw an absolute fit. I also know that whenever that happens, the boss comes to me and wants an explanation. Why did this happen? Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press notes. This is my transaction notes. And now I can say, Sarah said 20 off because 
blah, 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 whatever my reasoning may be, and accept. I go through my process, I accept Maury's money, et cetera, and God forbid she paid cash. You know, if I modify the price and she paid cash, it might look like I pocketed the additional $20. Now, the boss comes up to me a couple of weeks later, just like I knew was going to happen. But you know, I do hundreds of transactions a day, and I, maybe I don't have the greatest memory either. And the boss comes up to me and he says, hey, uh, Sarah's got a problem on her commission report. She wants to know what's going on here. Now, I could say, I don't know, which makes me look bad, or I could go into the client's file and go to their history. And we can find that. Maybe this is a couple of weeks ago. Ah, there's, there it is. Sarah got a chest for $30. Oh, yeah, okay, well, she got a chest for $30. Highlight that transaction, and any note that is associated with that transaction will appear. So now, basically what I've done here is a CYA. I've covered myself. And I now mm -hmm. say to the boss, oh, Sarah said 20 off because blah, 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 and now he can go back to Sarah. I've got an explanation for why the transaction itself was out of the norm. So anytime a transaction is out of the ordinary, if there's something different about it, there's something odd about it, simply clicking that note button so that you can attach a note explaining why that transaction is out of the ordinary is a really good idea. Especially, God forbid, you know, a friend of mine comes in and gives me a coupon and I accept her. And then when the boss is looking at things, he's like, wow, this guy, you know, has gotten so many things for free. And he happens to be a good friend of the front desk girl. You know, maybe I need to look into this. Well, if there's a good reason for it, hopefully the notes will say. Again, any time that you might think, boy, this could be difficult for me, then there's that little mm -hmm. note section there. That's kind of a, you know, covering yourself. All right? Uh, any questions on transaction notes before we continue? No, that sounds great. All right. Okay, the next thing that we're going to talk about is modifying a transaction. Now, most people are, in fact, familiar with the fact that the software can modify a transaction. However, a lot of people do it wrong. And so we're going to kind of go over that very quickly. Once again, we'll see a transaction that we did so we can go to the client file and we can go into their history and we can find a transaction or we could also just go here and go to transactions and I can put in a transaction number if I know it or I can go to a date and find a transaction or I could just hit last transaction and it'll bring me to the very last one I did so that's what I'm gonna do here so here's my transaction Maury saw Sarah she got a chest wax she paid thirty dollars and maybe the reason that she paid thirty dollars wasn't because there was an error that Sarah did Let's pretend that I didn't put a note on this. Maybe I just had fast fingers, and I hit a three instead of a five. And then I processed it out. And I said, when it was over, oh, my God, I just, you know, she gave me the $50, but I noticed that I charged her 30 in the system. And, I, okay, now this is going to be a problem. She, the customer gave me 50 I processed it for 30 My drawer is going to be off by 20 because I'm honest. I'm going to put all $50 into the drawer. But I need to fix this so I can modify this transaction. And so to modify a transaction, you click on the Modify button once the transaction is pulled up, and that will pull up the transaction parts. So now I can say, OK, this was actually $50, not 30 But what I've done here, a lot of people make a mistake, is once they make a change, they move on to the next part of the transaction. And then they change it here as well. Well, that's not good enough. Notice when I go back, it's back to 30. So what I need to do is put in my price and save. Then go to the next part of my transaction and say she paid 50 and save. So both parts of the transaction have to be saved if you're changing both parts. And so after I've done that, now I'm right. Now it's $50 was the price and $50 paid. Now, again, you might have said, wait a minute, why, why couldn't I have just changed this to $50 and saved and canceled out? Well, because then that would have said that it was a $50 service and she would have paid $30 for it. And so there would be a problem with the transaction. So I did have to change both parts of the transaction. It's not A transaction can have lots of different parts. For instance, let's go back to um, James Fabiani here. There's four different parts to this transaction. 
The first part is he got a back facial for $65. The second mm -hmm. part was he did a merchandise return for $21. Then the third part was that he paid $50. And the fourth part was that he got $6 in change. Any one of these can be changed, or all four. But again, whatever part of it you're changing, you must save that part before you move on to the next part you're going to change. Now, if there really is only one part you're changing, then you can change, save, and cancel. But again, that may or may not be what you want to do. Depending on what needs to be changed throughout, you have to go through each part of the transaction and save each part after you've made those necessary changes. So some of the other things that you might be able to do, for instance, is this. Maybe it wasn't Debbie that did the back facial. Maybe he was booked with Debbie, so you processed it out with Debbie. But actually, Debbie had called one of her girlfriends and said, hey, I'm running late. Hey, Madison, would you mind uh, doing the back facial for me for James Fabiani? Because I'm going to be running a little bit late. And she says, sure, sure. But you at the front desk, James Fabiani comes up to the front desk to pay, and you just process them out, and it processed with Debbie. And then Madison says, hey, actually, I did that. Debbie was running late, so she called me and asked me to cover for her. So I did the back facial. OK, well, I've got to modify that then. So we go to modify. And it says operator for the back facial. Operator was dead. No, it wasn't. It was Madison and save. Now, in that respect, that is the only part I have to change. Now, Madison did the back facial, and she got tagged for the returned product. But everything else remained the same. But again, I could have changed it from Madison to, say, Melinda and save and then go over here and say that it wasn't Madison who's, who got tagged for the return. It was Pamela and save. I could have even said it wasn't the just an all-in-one shampoo that was being removed, I mean, uh, returned. It was something else. Perhaps it was product number 10, which is what? I need to find that product, and I need to put in that name here. And it may even be a different price. So there's lots of different things that I may have to change. But every time I do, I hit save. So now it's Melinda that did the back facial and Pamela that got tagged for the return, et cetera, and done. By changing that transaction, it's going to change my reporting. It's going to change my commissions. So because of that, it's a dangerous place to be. So I recommend that modifying a transaction should only be available to managers and or owners, and not just to anybody willy-nilly because it's also a place that's ripe not only to make mistakes, but it's ripe for fraud. Because mm -hmm. Madison can say, ooh, I'm going to take Debbie's service here, and I'm going to take Christian's service there, and I'm going to take Sally's service here. Now, they do hundreds of services a month, so they won't notice one service, but I just got three extra services, so I just made myself some extra money. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yes. All yes. right, so that's modifying a transaction. It can be a dangerous place to be. Um, so definitely something that you may want to have password protected. Unfortunately, we do not go into password protection in this class, but I mean everybody's aware that the software has password protection, so um, and this class is kind of showing you things that you shouldn't be I mean that you may or may not be aware of. Any question on modifying a transaction before we continue? Um, no, sounds good. All right. Okay, the next thing that we're going to talk about is the points program. Now the points program itself, actually learning it takes about an hour. So you would schedule your points program training uh, whenever you want. Um, we don't have standard classes like this. Uh, you simply schedule training with someone like me to learn your points program. Or you can watch the points program video, et cetera, um, that we have as well. However, I want you to be aware of it. Now, most people are aware that the software has a points program, but they don't understand quite how it works. So very briefly, I'm going to give you the one hour class in five minutes. And okay. what is the points program? I'm going to pull up a customer like Miss Babcock. And you'll notice when I pulled her up, her picture appeared. And it says that she has 3,954 points. OK? Let me clear that. Let me pull up another customer here. We'll go with uh, Balt here. Notice no picture, no points. The reason for that is because that picture and those points are telling you that this person is part of your membership program. And if nothing is there, they're not part of your membership program. It's really very simple. So let's go ahead and pull up Ms. Babcock again. And let's say that she saw Madison. 
and got, no, let's not go with Botox. Let's do with something a little bit simpler. We'll go with Christian here and say she got a blow dry and curl. And she got an automatic 5% off because she happens to be a gold member. I know that. If I click on her, I can see, by the way, she's a gold member and she gets 5% off retail and services. So now I'm going to go to payment. And Ms. Babcock can pay with cash or check or credit card, of course, but she can also pay with her points. I click on points. She has 3,954 points. And let's see here. She owes me $47.50. Okay, this particular service cannot be paid for with points. Okay, that's, so that didn't show up. This particular okay. service cannot be paid for points. So that's, that's good to know, actually. That's, I haven't seen that in a while. But um, what would have happened is the number of points required would have shown. And she, if she has enough points to pay for it, she'd be able to pay with her points. Also, another option would be instead of uh, she having enough, she may have some. Maybe it costs 6,000 points and she's got 4,000 points. So you can say she, you can let her use her 4,000 to get a discount on it instead of simply paying for it all. She gets a discount by using her points, and then she pays the balance, whatever the points didn't cover. So that's another option. You can either do freebies or you can do it cash value. Now, another thing that I want you to be aware of is that the points program itself is set up several different ways. So when I enable my points program, and this is where it gets a little complicated, and we're not going to teach you it right now, but I just want to very briefly show you, you can do things blanketly, really simple. You can say, you know what, I'm just going to do a, just a really standard earnings and redemption ratio. So I'm going to say $1 earns one point. So you spend $25 with me, you get 25 points. You spend $150 with me, you get 150 points, as simple as can be. And my redemption, though, I might say might be something like 10 to 1 or 20 to 1 or 50 to 1. But 10 to 1 would say you need 1,000 points to get a $100 service. You need 100 points to get a $10 product. Does that make sense? Yes. So on my, I, and so I can say, okay, I'm going to apply this to everything below that's not checked, and I'm going to make it for all services and all retail. So now what I've done is I've made this great big blanket uh, uh, points program that just says however much they spend with me, that's how many points they get. And then it's going to be 10 to 1 or 20 to 1 to pay for things with points. So really simple. But I could also, instead of that, do individual. I could do it by groups. I could say my massage is going to earn this way and cost this way. Or my um, lasers are going to earn this way and cost this way. My hair or my nails, et cetera. So you can do it by group. But you can also do it by individual services. You could actually say an individual service earns you this many points and costs you that many points. So you can even break it down by individual services or by categories of products or by individual products as well. So there's all sorts of different ways for you to create a points program. And once you have, you can also then set up your membership program. Where is my, oh, not sales register, general membership program. So in this case, now that I've created a points program, I can create a membership program, let's say like bronze here. And my bronze program is as basic as it gets. I, it, I give it away for free. It lasts a year. And I've said, you know what? Um, it doesn't give you any discounts on services. It doesn't give you any discounts on retail. It doesn't give you any free comp services. But it does earn points. That's what it does. And it gives you no earnings options for services. So that's my bronze program, as simple and basic as can be. But then I say, I'm also going to create a silver and that's $10 a month. And for $10 a month, you get 10, 2.5% off services. And you get 2% off product. And you earn points, but you earn points at an additional ratio of 2 to 1. So now, if a bronze member spends $100, he'd get 100 points. But if a silver member spent $100, he'd get 200 points. Because he's paying me $10 a month, I've got that guaranteed coming in. But again, he gets no earnings options for services. Let's take a look at another one here. I created a gold account. I said my gold one is $100 a month. For $100 a month, my customer gets 5% off all services, 5% off all retail, 
They get a free bang trim every single time they walk through the door. They can just sit down for a bang trim. They'll never be charged for it. Also, they get a three to one ratio on their points. So they're going to earn points three times faster than a bronze member and a third faster than a silver member. So in other words, you spend $100 as a bronze member, you get 100 points. $100 as a silver member, you get 200 points. $100 as a gold member, you get 300 points. Cool. Also, I've said that every month they get one free French manicure, which is worth $25. Every month they get it for free, no problem at all. Now, I can use these checkboxes to add things to this. For instance, and by the way, I could have made this two free French manicures if I wanted, right. or three or 10, it doesn't matter. Um, but now I've said here, by checking this box, earns in month of purchase. And what that means is that if you're a gold member, as soon as you sign up to be a gold member, you get a free French manicure. Um, if that's not checked, then they have to be a gold member for a month before they earn their first free French manicure. But if it is checked, they get it the instant they have signed up. Services accumulate. If this is checked, that means that, let's say I sold her this gold membership in September. So she's got herself a free French manicure immediately. But she doesn't use it. In October, she gets another one. And because I have services accumulate, she now has two that she can use. And she still doesn't use them. So in November, she now has three that she can use. Once again, because services accumulate. If that is unchecked, then she has one in September, and she doesn't use it in October. She still only has one because she lost it. She lost the one in September because she never used it. So services do not accumulate. And then this one here can be redeemed towards other services. This is a really neat one because this turns this French manicure into $25 value. Now, of course, the French manicure is already worth $25, but what I've said is that I can use my free French manicure, which is worth $25, to apply $25 towards any service I get that month. Okay. So if they accumulate and I haven't used my free French manicure four times in a row, then I've got $100 I could spend towards anything I want if I have this checked. If I don't, then I've got four French manicures I can use because I've got my mm -hmm. services accumulate checked. So different things that you can do there. And once you've set that up, you're ready to go. Now again, that's the points program, the loyalty rewards membership points program. There's a lot more to it, and there's a class that you can learn exactly how to set it up. Now, one of the things that we like people to do is for them to have an understanding, a brief understanding of how it works like you do now, uh -huh. and then you say to yourself, okay, this is the way I see my points program working. Once you have in your mind the way you want it set up, that's when you take your one-on-one -on -one class for it. And the reason we say that is because then we can dial into your system and help you design your loyalty rewards membership program the way you want it to be, rather than simply sitting through another class and then going back and trying to do it all yourself. That way, when we're done with you, your points program is up and running the way you want it to be. Does that make sense? Great. Yes. Yes. All that's right. Fun. Okay, um, so now we're going to get to um, just about the last portion of this. We've only got a few more things to show you, but one of the things that we have to show you is the um, promotions. There are four different types of promotions in the system. There are operator promotions, retail promotions, service promotions, and points promotions. Now, when people think of promotions, they usually think of advertising. Hey, uh, we're gonna we're gonna send out an email, or we're gonna put an ad out that says, you know, uh, this weekend only, 25% off all Kerastos products. You know, you could do something like that, or this weekend only, um, all Swedish massages are 15% off. You know, something like that. So they think of it as advertising. Well, that's fine. You still want to correspond your promotions with your advertising, of course, because you want your customers to be aware of your promotions. However, you also want your software to be aware of your promotions so that your front desk staff doesn't have to worry about what promotions you've created and they have to remember all of them and they have to, you know, or the customer has to bring in a coupon or something like that. Uh, and if they don't, you know, now what do I do? They want to use this promotion or, and I'm not familiar with the promotion, all sorts of things like that. What you want is the software to be aware of it. So we're going to go to other. And under other, we've got the, first, the top four items here, rewards promo, 
retail promo, service promo, and operator promo. The first three, I mean the bottom three actually, operator promo, service promo, and retail promo are all very similar. Rewards promo is different. So we're going to start with our operator promo. Click here, and this brings up our operator promotion. Now, understand, an operator promotion is essentially saying that this promotion is based on an employee or group of employees. That's what an operator promotion is. It's based on your employees. So I'm going to create, um, we'll say, Christian's um, April. So that's what I'm calling my operator promotion. And then I'm going to say that it is good from April 1st to April 31st. Whoops, not March. April 30th. There we go. From April 1st to April 30th is when this promotion is good for. Then I can choose a specific group of services, or I can go with all groups. And when I do that, all of my staff members that I want to stick into this promotion will appear. Now, I could have said, no, it's just going to be in my massage group, and then choose go by my people. But no, I'm going to say all groups. And I don't want it to be for everybody. This is going to be specifically for Christian. Then I get to choose a discount code. These are my coupons that I've already created. So I've got one here called Christian's Promo. So it's ready to go. Now, what if you didn't have one ready to go? That's what this mm -hmm. button is for. I could click here, and I can create a coupon. So let's create one. And I'm going to call this CA. And this is going to be my Christian's April promo. And I'm going to say that it is 25% and accept. OK. So now I can go down here and find my, there it is. There's my Christian's April promo. So I just created one. And uh -huh. save. What have I done? I have now said to the software, if anybody comes in and gets a service, any service, Remember, I could have limited it to certain services. But instead, I said, yeah. if anybody comes in and gets any service from Christian between April 1st and April 30th, they're going to get 25% off that service automatically. Okay. Now I can advertise it. Now I can go out to the world and say, hey, we just hired Christian, the world-famous, world-renowned hairstylist from New York. And uh, he works for us here now. And... and you know, we're trying to build up his client base, so come on in and see Christian. And if you come in during the month of April, you're going to get 25% off all services that you do with Christian. Okay? So you've got your advertising out there. Your staff doesn't even have to be aware of it. Of course, you should probably make them aware of it. But your staff doesn't even have to be aware of it. Starting April 1st, anybody who gets a service with Christian is going to get 25% off automatically. Your software is going to handle it because that promo is running. That is the employee or operator promo. Next, we go to other, we go to service promo. You guessed it, it's the same thing, but instead of being based on an employee, it's now based on services. So I can choose something like, uh, let's call this my laser April, and then again, give it my effective dates, or maybe instead of laser April, I'm gonna say laser first WK April. Okay. or WKND. So this is just the first weekend of April. And so I'll say, starting with um, Saturday the 1st and ending on Sunday the 2nd, just a two-day promotion. And then I choose my group, and I'll choose my laser services. And do I want it to be all my laser services or just some of them, or just one of them even? But no, I'm going to say I want it to be all and then I get to choose my code. Now, you already saw how I created it, so I'm just going to grab one here. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. I'll go with Cecilia's sure. coupon here. And save. Now, by doing this, now I'm going to advertise, and I'm going to say, first weekend of April only, get 25% off or get 50 or get 50% off, whatever, because you're trying to push this thing, all laser services, all laser hair removal or all whatever. You just and you uh -huh. advertise. So that what happens then is that if somebody walks through the door and they get a service on April 1st or April 2nd for a laser service, the software will automatically apply the discount. Your, again, your front desk staff doesn't even have to be aware of it, so I'm not going to go ahead and save that one. But um, 
So that's how that works. Again, it's based okay. on the service. Now we go back to other, we go to retail. Once again, same thing. This time, however, it's based on products rather than services or employees. Okay. So just very quickly, I'm just going to grab one now because we've already gone through the, the, the class of it, basically. So I'm just going to grab an old one here. Here I've got my brushes promo. I put in my dates. I can choose my vendor, my manufacturer, and my category, and then choose the products that I want out of that category to actually uh, apply my discount to. And there's my brush promo. So now, again, I advertise, hey, this weekend only, all brushes are 20% off, or whatever it is. Okay. Again, it works the same way. If somebody comes in and buys one of these products during the set dates that I've set, then they will automatically get the discount. Finally, our rewards promo. This one's different. This one is not a discount that gets applied, like a coupon or something like that. Instead, mm -hmm. this one is going to change your points earnings factors. Now, you can set that up any way you want, but let, remember when I showed you the bronze, silver, and gold? Mm -hmm. And of course, you can name them anything you want to. You certainly don't have to go with those. But let's just say that I said, okay, I can do it by services, or I can do it by products. I can even do it, say, you know, when you give me a referral, um, I give you 2,500 points, you know, or something like that. So there's different ways that you can set up your points program. We've already discussed that. But now I'm saying I'm going to create a new promo. So I've got my mother's points promo, and I'm going to give it a factor of two. I could give it a factor of three or a factor of four. And I put in my effective dates. Then I can choose my groups of services or my individual services or my category of products or my individual products, et cetera, and activate. By doing that, what I've said is I am doubling your points factor. So if you're a bronze member and you spend $100, you would normally have gotten 100 points. But if you spent that $100 on any of these, you would get 200 points. Mm -hmm. And as a silver member, you would have gotten 200 points for that same $100, but now you're going to get 400 points if you spent it on these. And if you're a gold member, you would have gotten 300 points, so you're going to get 600 points if you spent it on these. It is, it is a, 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 by a factor of, in this case, two. So that's kind of like that advertisement that says, this weekend only, double points on all Kerastase products. Or uh -huh. this weekend only, earn triple points on all massages, or whatever it may be. So again, this is now going to affect your customer's points earnings. However, if your customer is not a member, if they do, are not part of your points program, they could still get these, and they won't earn any points at all. They have to be a member of your points program, whether it's a paid uh -huh. membership or a free membership. Uh, those are the four different promotions that this, we offer in the software. Do you have any questions on any of that? So there's not one by clients. A promotion by client? By in or, or, or some way to differentiate pricing in client by client? Uh, no. I mean, certainly you can give out coupons. And you could give out. Yeah. You can sell gift certificates. You can even give gift certificates for free. So, for instance, if a if a client comes in and they're just, you know, you, let's say for instance, I'm going to go here to reports because that's a good question. I'm going to go to reports here, and I'm going to go to clients, and I want to go to my let's say client ranking, and I say, you know what, I want a list of my top 50 clients or my top 20 clients or my top 100 clients based on service sales or retail sales or just based on how much they spend during a particular date range. And then I accept that. So I get my list. So maybe I've got a list of 20 right. customers that are, these are my top 20 customers. And so what I can mm -hmm. do then is say, for instance, you know what, I'm going to create 20 gift certificates um, for, let's say, $100 each, and I'm going to mail them out to my top 20 customers as a gift. Well, that's something okay. you can do for sure. That would be a, a, you know, a promotion, I guess. That would be client-specific. Um, certainly, you can yeah. do something like that. You could also, remember I talked about emailing? This just popped into my head. Mm -hmm. But let's pull up Miss um, Babcock here and hit email. Yeah. And I could say, uh -huh. put in my subject and put in my message and say something like, this email is, is specially for Michelle Babcock. 
Michelle, print this email out and bring it with you for 10% off your next service with us because you're such a great customer. Yeah. Simply by typing something like that and hitting send, she now has been sent a promo that is specific just to her. So, I mean, you great. can certainly do things like that. And if you've got a coupon set up for, let's call it client promo, and let's say it's 10% off, then you know that if they bring in that email that you sent to them, that uh, you're going to apply that client's promo discount. Okay. So you could certainly do things that like that. There's, yeah, there's all right. sorts of different ways for you to do it. But as far as the software having an automatic promo based on an individual client, I mean, we've got uh, customers with 60,000 clients in their database. It would be, that would be pretty hard to do. So, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right. Um, they're, uh, they're, they're, we're basically at the end of the class right now, but I want to just mention a couple of things. First, I want to say that Pro Solution Software has a Facebook page, and if you're not following it, I highly recommend that you do. Our Facebook page um, gives uh, things like tips on the software, or they tell you where we're going to be, or we tell you tell you about classes that we're offering, or just you know uh, articles that may be important to the beauty industry, etc. We don't sell things through our Facebook page. Uh, it's it's not an advertisement to you, so don't worry about that. It's an inform it's an informative page for you. So if you've got a Facebook page and you're a client of Pro Solutions, you should be following it. Um, that's one thing. Another thing is um, the uh, oh, what was I going to say? Oh, the live chat. Everyone's familiar with live chat, I'm sure, because when you use live chat, uh, you can talk to our customer support representatives uh, within about 15 seconds. But the reason I mention it in this class is because what a lot of people are not familiar with is that live chat is available on Saturdays for four hours, um, from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. Eastern time on Saturdays. Um, so we've got live chat available, of course, Monday through Friday. But what people don't know is that it's also available on Saturdays. A lot of customers right. think that Saturdays is automatically an after-hours event, and they know, you know, even though you get free technical support and training for 10 hours on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, and you get five hours of free technical support and training on Fridays, what they don't know is that you've got four hours on Saturdays, and they just think right. automatically that it's an after-hour support, and therefore they may have to pay for it. Well, they certainly don't if they're within those hours. So I want you to be aware of that. Now, before I end right. this class, I want to ask you two questions. First. Was there anything you were hoping I was going to show you that I didn't? Um, do you have any questions for me at all, either on something I showed you or something you were hoping I was going to? That's my first question. No, I, I really didn't come into it with a lot of expectations. I just wanted okay. to see what you all presented with it. Sure. Well, I hope that you um, found Since I'm newer to the software, absolutely, absolutely. Good. Good. Um, now, the lots next question of good then is, well, I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, I see lots of good tips and tricks that will oh, make it okay. easier to use the software. Good, good. Um, the next thing that I want to ask is, would you like a copy of, now this was just a one-on-one, -on -one. no one else joined the class, it's just you and me. Um, <laughs> would you like a, uh, the class emailed to you, this class that you and I just that attended? Would, yes, that would be great. Okay, so let me just make sure I've got the right email address for you. I've got billy at therapywithbilly.com? That's correct. That's the one you want it to send to? Okay, all right. So let me just make sure I've got that. Okay. And then finally, my last question is, uh, I'm not a question, but a statement, and that is I want to say thank you very much for spending time with me today because, Billy, I'll tell you honestly, the people that are the happiest with the software are the people that know the most about it. And so I hope that you attend other classes as well, but the truth is is that I really do appreciate you taking the time because it's those that have spent the time in the classes that end up being the customers that are with us for 10, 15, even 20 years. Have a great day, mm -hmm. Billy. Take care. You too. I'll see, I'll see you in a half hour. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. Bye-bye.